This is Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Hello, I'm Peter Anthony Holder. Welcome to this week's edition of Your Health. While it's often said that there's nothing more natural for human beings than to have children, in practice it's often fraught with worry and questions, especially for those who have never done it before. On the next couple of programs, we'll delve into the first 48 hours of a child's life at the hospital and also their first 48 hours after they arrive at their new home. First up, let's talk about the delivery and what happens when you enter the doors of the hospital ready to bring that bundle of joy into the world. Michelle Douglas is a registered nurse at the Jewish General Hospital. Michelle, generally speaking, from the time of birth, how long do mothers and babies stay at the hospital? Well, for vaginal deliveries, the usual stay is about 48 hours, and then for C-sections, it's about 72 hours, as long as everything is okay. So during that time, from the point of birth, what takes place? So from the point of birth, they stay in the family birthing center for up to two hours, and then they come to our side being the postpartum uh, area, which is on 5 West. And this is a, this is going on the assumption, of course, that it's it's a, a simple birth, there are no complications, correct? That's correct. That's correct. So if it's a C-section, then they would go to the recovery room area and stay there for um, about two hours or so, and then they would come to our side. What should the couple bring with them to the hospital? What should the, the new mothers bring to the hospital with them to be prepared for having that baby? Right. That's a very common question. So they should, should certainly bring their uh, hospital card, the Medicare card, the obstetrical file, which they might receive from the secretary of the doctor, who they've been seeing throughout the pregnancy. They should bring any medications that they're on, um, their medical records that they may have, diapers, wipes, clothing, blankets for the babies, toiletries. Pillows are very important because uh, our pillows are not the most comfortable at the Jewish General. They should bring clothing, underwear, uh, pads for mom, pajamas for the partner, and uh, a car seat, particularly for when the parents are ready to leave. It's also handy to bring um, the Tiny Tots book. Tell us about the Tiny Tots book. What's that? So the Tiny Tots book is a governmental book, uh, and it's basically written specifically for parents as to what they can expect um, in terms of uh, how to care for the baby and also what the mommy can expect uh, for herself for up to two years post-delivery. Now, you mentioned car seat. Uh, I'm sure that's something that a lot of people haven't taken into consideration, especially if they're obviously coming by car. What happens if they don't have a car seat? So if they don't have a car seat, uh, it's not like we say they can't leave. It's just that it's mandatory by law for all babies to be in a car seat in a private car. So this is why we strongly suggest for them to uh, bring the car seat to the hospital, make sure that they know how to use it, make sure that they're familiar with all the details of their specific car seat. And then once they're ready to leave with the baby in the car seat, we as nurses check to make sure that the baby is well placed in the seat. And generally speaking... As a nurse, what is your role in caring for the mother and child? So we monitor the mom and baby from the time that they come over to our side, the postpartum area. Um, we make sure that the, we check to make sure that the mom is stable and we'll be doing vital signs. We check uh, her fundus, we check her bleeding. Um, we check to make sure that she doesn't have a fever. Uh, if she has a C-section, then we there's a few other things that we check that might be a little bit different. So we look at her dressing. Um, we check to see if she might have uh, any clots or if she has any signs of any clots, rather. And um, we do a whole physical examination on a regular basis. We help with breastfeeding, and that's very important. We also check the baby, make sure that the baby is physically stable as well and that the baby is latching on well as the mom chooses to breastfeed. What kinds of questions do first-time parents, either moms or dads, what kinds of questions do they ask you generally? Uh, So generally speaking, they usually ask, uh, when will my belly go down? That's a very common question that uh, moms tend to ask. They sometimes want to know how long will the bleeding go on for. Uh, Sometimes they want to know know, um, how do I know if my baby is getting enough milk. 
That's a very common question. Um, sometimes they'll ask, uh, when will this pain go away? When will the, um, the contractions go away? They're sometimes surprised to see that they, especially the first-time parents, that they ha- may have some pain after delivery. Uh, what can I use for the pain? Um, sometimes they're concerned about the, the uh, engorgement of the breast and how to manage that, what to do about that. Those are usually the kinds of questions that they may ask. Well, let's let's go through some of those questions in, in specific. Uh, f- the first one you mentioned, uh, when when will the belly go down? How long does that take normally? Right. So that depends from lady to lady. Um, <laughs> but one thing that they can do certainly is um, they can do exercises. Usually, we recommend that you that they start that after six weeks postpartum. So that's usually uh, the time that they would see their doctor for follow up, and then once the doctor gives them the uh, the tickets to, you know, to go and exercise, they can certainly start exercising after that. And um, that usually helps for the body systems to um, get back to normal. I mean, of course, from from the time that they deliver to the six weeks, a lot of things start returning to normal. But in terms of uh, getting back into shape, definitely exercise will help. So in terms of the time as to when they'll get back to what they were before, it's hard to say because each lady is different. Uh, some ladies return back to their pre-pregnancy weight within a couple of months, and some take longer. It really depends on the individual, but you, exercise helps. You mentioned uh, a couple of things uh, as far as questions that are asked. One was about feeding, and the other was about pain, and I want to put those two together only because I'm sure some parents would have a concern if they're breastfeeding, if they're taking any kind of medication for pain. Is that a concern uh, passing any kind of medication on through bre- through breast milk, for instance. Right. So the medications that we give uh, in the postpartum area are safe with breastfeeding, and we reassure the mom about this uh, many times uh, over. If there is a medication that the mom may need to take that is not safe with breastfeeding, we definitely let her know, and then we you know, we take it from there. In terms of pain control, the medications that we often prescribe are absolutely safe with breastfeeding, and um, she can definitely go ahead and breastfeed uh, without having to worry about the well-being of the baby. You mentioned the two areas that first-time moms will, will enter into when they come in to have a baby. Can you give us a physical description of those locations? Once they get into the family birthing area, usually the first area that they go into is called the triage area. So um, basically there's stretchers and a little uh, cubicle, and basically they're triaged as to where they need to go once they, uh, once they come. So um, not everyone who uh, comes in with pain may actually be ready to have their baby at that time. So it's in that area that they decide where they need to go. Then uh, if they are ready to um, go into a delivery room, they would do that. It's a private room. It has a, a couch. It has a, or a lazy boy. It has. It's pretty spacious. It's a newer area of the hospital, and it's all private. There's a place for daddy. There's a sink. There's a bathroom. There's a shower area, so that's basically what it looks like. And then once they come to our area, which is uh, not as new as the Cape Pavilion, we have um, private rooms, and then we also have uh, semi-private rooms. We have one public room. The public room is a room with four beds. So uh, our rooms also have a bed, a chair, but it's it's not as necessarily as equipped as the uh, family birthing center area. In this day and age, is is it different than, a, than than the way it used to be? And by that, do I mean, do the babies, do the infants stay with the mother in the room, or or, or is it like the old days um, when they used to be taken to a nursery? In our hospital, we do strongly encourage uh, rooming in, and by that we mean that uh, we encourage for the baby to stay with the mom uh, all the time or as much as possible. And when it comes to the time of discharge, what do the parents have to do uh, to facilitate that process? One of the things that um, the parents can do before the actual discharge time is they can go to the uh, admitting office. And we do have a 
little subsection of admitting on our floor that they can go to, which is right next to the nursing station. And there they can get the declaration of birth papers and uh, they can have the assistance that they need to uh, fill that out. And those papers need to be returned to the government by 30 days post-birth. So that's one thing that they can do to facilitate the process. Uh, bringing the car seats is definitely um, another thing that they can do. And then on our side, what we do, apart from making sure that the mother and baby are physically and hemodynamically safe to go home, is we do what's called a discharge teaching. It takes about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and basically we go through all the things that uh, they can expect within the next six weeks uh, post-birth uh, or post delivery, and we review things in the package, which we give to the parents, such as uh, the vaccination booklet, information on the car seat, and we have a little pamphlet for the mom as to what to expect uh, for herself and for the baby. We have other papers in there as well, but that's basically the overview of the package. And again, since the mom and baby are there for about 48 hours, I would assume sometime in that period before they leave, baby gets his or her first bath. Uh, yeah. What kind of process do you go through to help uh, teach someone to do that if it's something they've never done before? The bath takes place, as long as the baby is stable rather, the bath takes place eight hours post-birth. Uh, and um, what we do, particularly if it's a first-time mommy or if it's a mommy who hasn't had a child in a while, sometimes there's a gap in between the, the kids, uh, is we do a bath demonstration. And during the demonstration, we teach them uh, what to do, what not to do, safety measures. And um, sometimes, it, particularly if we feel that the parents are um, nervous or uncomfortable or anxious or just need more, more time, then we might be able to squeeze in a return bath demo as well. There is no instruction booklet for a baby, but you guys are the next best thing, giving all the information that a new mom and a new dad would need to know uh, when it comes to taking care of their baby for the first time in the first few weeks of its life. Well, a lot of the instruction that we give, if not all, is written actually in the Tiny Tots book. So even, for example, how to bathe a baby is in there. Everything that we, that we say is, is actually in that book, how to breastfeed, pain control, it's all in that book. So we're just basically reinforcing what is already in the book. And we often refer to page, number, paragraph, and so on when we are doing our teaching. That's Michelle Douglas, a registered nurse at the Jewish General Hospital. On our next edition of Your Health, we'll let you know what the first 48 hours of your baby's life at home will be like and the role that CLSC nurses will play in it. And that's it for this edition of Your Health. Again, we remind you, if you missed any of our previous programs, you can find them archived on our website at podcast.cuswestcentral.ca. That's podcast.ciu, triple S, westcentral.ca. You'll find there all the information such as links or phone numbers that we've mentioned in the show. Also, feel free to drop us a line if there is a topic or area of discussion that you'd like us to explore on future shows. I'm Peter Anthony Holden. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Join us next week for another edition of Your Health.